I'm Peter Block at ACC 2019 in New Orleans. With me is Marco Valdemigli from Switzerland. He wanted to say Chicago, but Switzerland <laughs> it is this time. Uh, Marco has just done the Glassy trial, and we all know about Ticagrelor, and we all know whether uh, it may or may not be better than a dual antiplatelet therapy. So, Marco, tell me about Glassy because it has some fascinating outcomes. Well, thank you very much for having me. In Glassy, we actually compared a standard of care consisting of one year DPT followed by aspirin monotherapy in a broad uh, PCI population as compared to a new experimental treatment consisting of aspirin and ticagrelor for one month only. Then aspirin was dropped and the patient were left on ticagrelor monotherapy. Okay, so long-term ticagrelor. Absolutely. Okay, twice a day pill. Right, 90 milligram twice a day. That was the regimen. Excellent. Okay, so let's get to the bottom line. What did you show? So we actually had two co-primary endpoints, and we were able to prove non-inferiority with respect to the ischemic endpoint, which was the composite of death, MI, stroke, and urgent target vessel vascularization. And we also show no difference with respect to the bleeding endpoint. Yeah, that's an interesting bleeding endpoint, isn't it? Because you'd expect maybe that with a NOAC you would in fact see a little bit more bleeding, but repetitively this has not been the case. Absolutely not. The primary endpoint was BARC-3 or 5, and that actually was observed exactly in the same proportion of patients, 2.46% at two years. Yeah. And in fact, even when you compare ticagrelor monotherapy with aspirin monotherapy in the second year, the bleeding rate was almost identical. Okay, so now your patient's on ticagrelor for a year or uh, aspirin and or antiplatelet therapy, so after a year, you have some very interesting outcomes with myocardial infarction particularly. That's absolutely true. I think the signal, the really important signal that we saw is in the second year when ticagrelor monotherapy was compared to aspirin monotherapy, where actually we saw that both MI and stent thrombosis rates were lower with ticagrelor monotherapy as compared to aspirin. Now, if you factor in the information about the bleeding, where we saw no difference in bleeding, I think ticagrelor monotherapy starts to becoming a very interesting and appealing approach to mitigate the ischemic risk without increasing the bleeding. Risks. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about stent thrombosis because the numbers are low. What, is, what were the actual numbers at one, after one year? Well, that's a great question. The numbers, you are very right, were very low. We had 14 uh, actually cases in the control group and two cases in the experimental arm. So it's true, the numbers were very low, but actually much, much lower with Ticagra. There was an almost 90% risk reduction. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a pretty important signal, isn't it? So uh, before we started all this, I asked Marco whether or not I should switch from aspirin to Ticagrelor from my preventive therapy. <laughs> And uh, he paused for about a millisecond and said, Ticagrelor. So do you think that this is a good idea going forward? We obviously need much more information, don't we? I think we need to be cautious. We need much more information. This is only the first of a large number of studies which are actually running. So I guess we have to wait for the result of those studies. But I think the first signal is very appealing and promising. There you go. Keep your eye on Ticagrelor, folks.